In this video, we look at why various types of files such as text, sound and images are often compressed, and we understand the difference between lossless and lossy compression. The purpose of compression is to reduce the size of files, the download times of files, reduce storage requirements and make the best use of available bandwidth. Now, the last point, make best use of bandwidth, is particularly important. Given the vast amounts of data sent and streamed over the internet every day, making efficient use of bandwidth can be critical. By reducing a file size as much as possible, you can considerably speed up the time it takes to transmit the file. Compression achieves its goals by reducing the overall size of a file as much as possible. There are two different methods of compression, lossy and lossless. Both reduce the overall size of files, but in very different ways. When a compressed file arrives at its destination, it needs to be uncompressed so it can be read again. With an image, the number of different colors increases the size of the file. Here, we're only using one bit per pixel to store the two different colors, white and black. Here, two bits per pixel are required to store four colors. And here, three bits per pixel are required to store eight colors. One way to reduce file size is to store a lower number of colors or to store larger areas of pixels as a single color. Both techniques will reduce the quality of the compressed image, so they're known as lossy compression. With images, audio and video, a small reduction in quality is not normally very noticeable. Therefore, lossy compression is considered an acceptable compromise of quality versus file size and download time. Here are two images. It's hard to tell which one is the original unless we zoom in and look really closely. Despite the fact that we've got a significant reduction in file size. Another approach doesn't sacrifice any quality during compression, and this is known as lossless compression. In this image, there are several large areas of white pixels. Instead of storing every pixel with the same binary pattern, we could store the binary for white followed by the number of white pixels in a row. With lossless compression, we can reduce the size of an image file, but we're able to restore the image in its full original quality when it's uncompressed, and that's the important difference. However, this method is only effective on images with large areas of continuous color. Therefore, lossless compression is ideal for vector style images such as logos, cartoons, and icons, but far less so before color photographs where there are very few blocks of continuous repeating color. Now the file type often determines which method of compression is best. Some files are simply not suitable for lossy compression. With tech documents, for example, and executable program files, we must not lose any of the data during compression. For these files, we must use lossless compression as we need to be able to restore the entire file. So let's recap. Compression reduces the file size, makes the file quicker to transfer, and the file takes up less space and storage. With lossy compression, some data is actually lost when the file is compressed. It slightly reduces quality, but can significantly reduce the file size. It's great for multimedia files such as image, audio, video. With lossless compression, none of the original data is lost, so the original file can be recreated when it's uncompressed, and it's suitable for executable files and documents. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is the difference between lossy and lossless compression?